what? It's um, Monday afternoon, late afternoon, early evening after work, and, well, you know, I'm pretty tired. I spent all day yesterday, well, most of the early afternoon, being chased all over San Francisco by none other than Godzilla himself. Finally ditched him in the, um, in the mission and headed over to Tiger Lily, where um, a great event was going on. It was a launch of three new perfumes by En Voyage. The event was hosted by Antonia Cole, the owner of Tiger Lily, the pop-up uh, perfume shop that has now moved in, uh, to a new location. And as I said, there'll be a link down below to that. Um, the perfumes are uh, uh, the chocolate collection by, by Shelley Waddington. And here's my little souvenir de chocolat. And here are three of the bottles. Now, the perfumes are um, Café Cacao, Captured in Amber, and Indigo Vanilla. And let me tell you, each one of them is really spectacular. I hope to be doing some reviews on each one of them individually later on. But right now, I just want you to see what the event was like. And Antonia Cole will be presenting uh, Hilary Randall, who is a, a scent, um, a fragrance specialist here in San Francisco and works with Shelley and also works uh, with such companies as Dior and Diptyque and... La Chazam Parfumier and uh, Byredo. Uh, and um, then she'll introduce uh, Shelley, who'll uh, talk about her perfumes. So let's get on with the show, uh, and you can see what a great time everyone had, and we wish you were there. Uh, so th in the meantime, this is Lanier Smith saying, wear what you love and not what they say you should like. Talk to you later. Bye. <laughs> Question number two, the Empress Josephine 
liked Musk so much that she ordered her workmen to embed it in the walls of her boudoir. True or false? True. 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 God, you guys know about this. <laughs> <laughs> well, so does Hillary. I think so Hillary has a I just wanted to say that, that 60 <laughs> years after her death, her boudoir still smelled of musk. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great job by the workmen, and maybe not a great job of cleaning the walls. <laughs> 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 together were quite the aroma. Yeah. Apart from the fact that Napoleon used to write to her and tell her not to bathe before mm -hmm. he came back to see her after being away on his military campaign. To yeah. musk and musk. <laughs> 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 musk and ambergris, those, those very sexy, sensual smells that kind of, it's like what we were talking about at this lawn, where we really are ruddy animals sometimes. And we don't really like to smell those smells directly, but we sure love them when they're embedded in the perfumes. And, and voila, <laughs> this, is, this is the inspiration for Cafe Cacao. Um, this is the musk and ambergris of the royals and their hot chocolate. And it's the perfume equivalent of the famed Parisian cafe. And yes, we've used the real vintage musk, uh, excuse me, ambergris in this. We've added a floral spicy vanilla, rose sucre, a pinch of cardamom and bergamot, and the earthy dark chocolate and French roast coffee are softened by honeyed resins. How does that sound? Mm -hmm. yeah. Victorian. Victorian France and England were, they had such a fetish about opium. And that's what inspired me to make Captured in Amber. I wanted opium. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted Persian and Arabian Amber. And I wanted them to surround and capture a big old fat part of dark chocolate. Question. Now this one I'm going to ask you to raise your hands on. And this is kind of a tough one, so don't, don't feel bad if you don't know. I wonder if anyone here can name the main ingredient in Middle Eastern amber. Okay. It's called, that's another clue, it's called rock rose sometimes. Oh, uh, what is it? Labdanum. Labdanum, right, exactly. It's, cis, it's sticky, it's some, sometimes called cystus, and it's a lovely plant-based, uh, beautiful, beautiful amber. And it is the main ingredient in the Middle Eastern ambers, absolutely. They set the goats, <laughs> the goats loose in the field, the goats ran around, the lab animal was so sticky, it clung to them, you shear the goats, and you have the, this amazing, animalic, sweet amber that there is just nothing like it. And that is what, uh, that's part of the result with captured in amber. Um, we've got this rich animalic amber, our opium accord, remember that's what we wanted, and a rich hearted chocolate with a little bit of uh, vanilla in it. Last one is called indigo vanilla. And I don't know what your associations are with the word indigo, but it's, to me it's just a really fascinating word. I just want to call out something you might associate that with. Like India. Blue. Yeah. yeah, blue, absolutely. And for me, I associate it with lapis lazuli, that, that stone that's so, it's, for me, it's hard, it's cold, it's gritty. It has a grittiness to it. And vanilla, on the other hand, what do we associate vanilla with? It's warm, it's friendly, it's soft, it's... <laughs> What else is this? Oh, very much. What do we have here? Oh, yeah, warm, friendly, and soft. So, and to pull these two very contrasting elements together, I used sweet, fresh cream, silky, white chocolate. And if you picture this in a cup with the whipped cream on top, I topped it with a sugared violet. And that's.
that's the one. Oh, and the ambergris. Ambergris is the thing that always, it never fails. It makes a perfume absolutely bloom and shimmer. And there is nothing in the world like it. Um, I, I just want to say that all of these fragrances smell very beautiful and delicious and happy all by themselves. And that's our mission, perfumes that make people happy. But these are so much more. They're made to layer with each other. And over the, uh, over the other En Voyage perfumes, Hillary is our expert in this. And she'll explain how to personalize these perfumes so that you can enhance your own fragrance wardrobe with them. And signature fragrance, as you all know, or have a wardrobe of fragrances that connect with colors they wear, or the season, the weather, or the city they live in, a variety of things. So I'm here to serve the needs of perfumers. That's what I do for a living. I work at Marty's. Um, I work at Nina Marcus. I work with commercial brands like Dior. I work with artisan brands like uh, En Voyage, um, L'Artisan Parfumeur, Dictique, Iredo, Serge Tant, etc. But my goal is really to help individuals to find themselves through scent and take that invisible accessory and make it real for them. So what are, what are the things that uh, when I worked at the Artisan Fragrance Salon with, she uh, with Shelley this past March, we talked about layering some of these fragrances together to play off different aspects of the notes in the fragrances, the base notes, the hard notes, the top notes, as well as the individual's chemistry and what your distinctive preferences are. So what I suggest is that when you layer fragrances, you think that your first spray is laying a foundation, a foundation of fragrances that have more base notes, so that you're almost creating that connection to the skin, that, that depth, of a kind of a diffusion of, of, of larger molecules that will hold that fragrance to your body. And then when you spray your second fragrance, perhaps that fragrance is going to be heavier in part or top notes that are going to sparkle or be subtle, as the French say, which means sparkle like champagne. So that's one of the ways that perfumers build fragrances is from the top down. And some people, I believe, like Yosh, also like to work from the bottom yeah. up. Um, and so those are ways that I recommend layering fragrances based on things that you like that work for your individual chemistry. This first fragrance that I'm going to show you uh, today is Tage Homme. Tage Homme is a really interesting fragrance. Um, I think it's interesting because it's a modern fougere. Uh, does anybody have a, uh, an idea of what a fougere is? <laughs> Those of you, Sebastian, man loves cologne blog. <laughs> Michelle, how do you define fougere? A woodsy, because fougere is a French word for fur. So this is a modern take on a fougere. It's a beautiful fragrance. It's more even the, of a unisex than a masculine. And the notes is perfect for a day like today, or if you're taking a vacation to someplace sunny and humid, you would like to have top notes that are gay from the Valley. 